Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And there's a reason for that. There shouldn't be a reason for it, but there was. I don't know if you remember, 12 years ago, when we first started coming here, Eileen was pretty vocal. And uh, I would tell her, Eileen, you've got to calm down. I said, they're not used to that out here. I said, you can't, you can't do that out here. Well, the good Lord instilled in my heart that no one has the right to tell another person to praise his name in his house. And with, with the Lord Jesus, that's 12 years ago, there ain't no statute of limitations. You know, he'll, he'll get you any time. You know, hey, remember this when this happened? You're going to, going to tell him no? And then, then you, you're lying, so then he's got you twice. Yeah, I, but I ask for forgiveness, and I apologize, Eileen. Anytime you feel like it, just cut loose. Praise the Lord. There you go. Get her done. Get her done. Get her done. <clears throat> Do we have any... Uh, well, I want to read this. This comes from the Bob Davis family, the family of D. Davis. Dear Ebenezer Church family, thank you so much for the beautiful plant you sent in honor of Dee. It was great seeing so many of you at our celebration of life. Your kindness will be always treasured and remembered. The family of Dee Davis. Do we have any visitors this morning? We want to welcome Anthony and his daughter for Anthony for giving the message. Uh, Joyce, Tyson. Yeah, I, got, I got one. I'm gonna come up front, so I. <clears throat> but I went. Uh, just got back from Houston. Is there any other joys? Yeah, Jason last week went to encounter, and uh, yeah, uh, Friday we was putting gutter on the. The arena and things wasn't going right for him you know he uh, couldn't get something to go right and uh, but you know he never cursed he never ye he God. never yelled Jesus. Now that, and he never yelled at me the whole time <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, re it really helped him I could I could see a difference that, he, you, that he was trying is there any other joys Really? Well, congratulations, man. <laughs> oh. well, congratulations, Tony. We got joy. We were able. We got the okay Thursday that we can go and get the boy baptized. All right. The DCF said we baptized. Well, that's great. That's great, son. Good. Any other joy, Kate? Well, I have a joy in that my daughter, who was here visiting from North Carolina, made it home, and the next morning she was hospitalized and had two emergency surgeries. And I thank you all for praying, and she went home yesterday. Well, good. She got all the blood clots cleaned down. And thank you, Jesus. Forward. Thank you. That's great. Praise God. Any other joys? We'll go to announcements. Prayer of this family is for Kate Rees. That's who we're praying for. Uh, Monday, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock is a prayer meeting over here before the Bible study with Merle and Joan to follow at the hall over there. Tuesday, May the 2nd at 325 is all God's children. I think, did the pastor say something about that, yeah, Tyson? It's, over, it's, it's done. Okay, so we'll... Never mind. Wednesday, May 3rd at 7, the youth group. Thursday, May 4th is a national day of prayer. Saturday, May the 6th at 1.30 is a church shower for Harley. Votes in the fellowship hall. See Brenda or Hattie Fisher for details. Saturday, May the 20th at 8 is a men's fellowship breakfast. Wednesday, May 31st at 7 is a... Ratification of disaffiliation will be voted on during an, an online only session beginning at 7 p.m. Sunday, June the 4th at 12 p.m. is a potluck 
dinner in honor of Pastor John and Madison. There's more details to come. July 7th to the 9th is a women's encounter at the cross, and August 25th to the 27th is a men's encounter at the cross. Is there any other announcements anybody wants to add? I've got two okay. that I just found out about yesterday in talking with Patricia. Well, one of them just found out about yesterday with Patricia. Um, the, uh, Joshua Johnson, who, uh, for those of you that came to some of the, the information meeting, he's the pastor from over at Burlington. Uh, he's uh, coming to talk uh, to like the administrative council, the disaffiliation uh, committee. Uh, but um, we are here at Ebenezer, I mean, as far as our ad council goes, there's people that hold, that hold the actual, like, certain positions. But we normally do what we call a church conference to where anyone is welcome to come. Uh, we're small enough that normally we can, we, can, we can accommodate that. And so that's going to be at 7 p.m. on May 7th, next Sunday. Uh, down in, uh, or excuse me, not 7 p.m., 4 p.m. next Sunday down in Madison. I'll have it, uh, I'll talk about it, I'll put it in the board. But uh, for those of you that, uh, it's basically going to be discussing uh, pastor, pastor support or how we might have a pastor. And so if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to come down there and, and discuss things. Or if you got questions, uh, Joshua hopefully will be able to answer them. And then the other thing that I forgot to put on there, and this one's probably more for just like the trustees, or, or uh, if you're once again, if you're interested, but mainly the trustees. Uh, there's a meeting with our insurance agent on uh, May 19th at 3 p.m. Uh, to discuss uh, what, or basically review our policy, because there's things that will happen in our policy now that we won't need going forward. And, of course, since we have chosen to disaffiliate when our disaffiliation is complete, our current insurance policy, that is the group policy, itself, policy with the UMC, will, will be no longer ours. So, if there's anyone that's interested in that, I'll have those <coughs> bulletin next week. Is there any other announcements? And Terry, I just have one. Okay. Um, we received, the Ladies Fellowship received a thank you note from Damon. We sent boxes to the kids at Outland College, and so Damon sent us the thank you note. I'll post it back there. Okay. Any others? We'll have the children's message. Hey, any other children that want to come down? Come on down. We got them all? Okay, so today we are going to talk about how we can trust God in every situation. So we are going to play a game, okay? This was a game that was probably was on television before you guys were even born, okay? And it's called, Who Do You Trust? Okay? So I'm going to ask you guys a question, and you have to figure out who do you trust to give me the answer. So you're not going to give me the answer, but you have to trust somebody that you know to give me the right answer. So put some trust, okay? All right, so they can be People up here, so you can choose the kids, or you can choose anybody out there in the audience. Okay, so anybody out there in the congregation that you think that it could be. Okay, so are you ready? Okay, all right, so, all right, here's the first one. It's gonna be a Bible question. Is there somebody that wants to volunteer to go first, or do you just want me to choose somebody? Brayden, okay, Brayden, who do you trust to answer a Bible question? Darren. All right, Darren. Here's your question. Darren? Who was the one that was swallowed by a big fish in the Bible? What was his name? Jonah. Is he right, Brayden? I don't know. <laughs> He's right. It is Jonah. Okay, so Jonah. So, Dar uh, Brayden, why did you choose Dar uh, Darren? He's the first person I saw. He's the first person you saw? Well, it's good that it was a pretty easy question then for Darren, but I think Darren could have answered harder with. Okay, so that's kind of how it goes. Okay, now we're going to go from a different one. So this is a television question. Okay, so is there somebody else that wants to volunteer? Okay, Emery, who do you trust? Yeah, okay. All right. Do you know which TV show stars Big Bird, Oscar Grouch, uh, Elmo, Cookie Monster. 
Is he right? Yeah. He is right, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> okay. So why did you trust Dad? He's in your family. You probably know that he knows a lot, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, today, Terry's going to read you in just a few minutes a scripture, and it's going to be talking about God. Okay. And do you know what it is? It's going to be the 23rd Psalms. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard that scripture? It's kind of a really famous one, okay? So we're going to be doing that. He's going to read that in a minute. And it talks about how David wrote this. Do you all know who David was? Remember David with the little slingshot? And he killed the giant. And then he gets to be king. Okay, so it's going to be about David. Okay, he's going to write this, okay? And he's going to be talking. I can imagine somebody maybe asked David, who do you trust? Or maybe David was having trouble. So he wrote this about this, okay? And so... We're going to see David himself was a shepherd. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know that he tended the sheep? Okay. And so he knew that shepherds, okay, they have to trust, the sheep have to trust the shepherd in every situation. So when the sheep are hungry, what does the shepherd have to do? Find them a place to eat, right? And you're going to hear that when Terry Reed says, when they're thirsty, what does he do? What does the shepherd do? He has to find them water, mainly, mainly beside maybe a stream or something. Okay, yeah. So if they're in danger, what does he do? What does he do? Yeah, he protects them. He might have to fight off the wild animals, different things. Okay, so the shepherd is always going to protect them, isn't he? So, yeah, so it says the sheep can trust their shepherd in every situation. Okay, and each day we find ourselves in difficult situations too, don't we? Okay, so we have to ask ourselves, who can we trust? And what do you think the answer is? God and Jesus, right? The answer is Jesus, God and Jesus. So the Bible tells us that Jesus is our good shepherd. Okay, so he's going to take care of us in every need that we have. Okay, because we are just like that sheep and just like David. Okay, we can say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Because that's what you'll probably hear Terry say. Okay, we can trust him in every situation that we have. Okay, so let's say a little prayer and then I'll let you guys get some candy. Okay. Dear Jesus, you are the good shepherd and we are your sheep. And we put our whole trust in you and we thank you for that. A blessing of Jesus coming down and saving us from our sins. We ask this in your holy precious name. Amen. Okay, here you guys go. You guys can have some can. Our gathering him today is great is thy faithfulness and it's in worship his majesty 519 United Methodist 140. Would you please stand?
join me in the call to worship. Come to the gate and find the good shepherd within. We need a shepherd. Round us up and bring us through your gate, O Lord. If you're hungry or thirsty, the good shepherd will provide you for your needs. That is just what we need in our souls thirst for God's word. Come, the gate and the shepherd will wait. Please join me in the opening prayer. Caring and compassionate God, you guide us in the right paths. You lead us in the way of our righteousness. That we have followed our anger, rage, greed, and sometimes even hate to direct our paths. Forgive us, help us to hear your voice. Give us hearts of love and compassion. Bring us close and draw us in as we begin in our worship. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is close to thee. Worship His Majesty 539 or United Methodist Hymn of 407. The Old Testament today, reading comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the epistle today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, as every man hath need. And they counted, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, 
did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. In the gospel today, will you please stand for the reading of the gospel, comes from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. <clears throat> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and their sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out of the find the pasture. The thief cometh not but by to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they, they, that they might have more abundantly. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can we sing one more song? It's a short one. It's in the little book. It's uh, 2164. I'll explain this in a second. I'm not much of a singer, so please, uh, I don't know. If you want to play, that'd be awesome. 2164. 2164. 2164. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's. Oh, okay. Sweet. Anthony, you want us to stand? I, okay, let's, let's, stand let's stand for it. Let's stand for it. There we go. Yeah. 
And I, I love that song because what it does is it, 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 it's, a, it's a prayer of my heart. It's me emptying my heart out to God and saying, God, all right, don't make this about me. Don't make this about any of the spectacles or any of the fun stuff or anything like that. But seriously, seriously God, I want, and, I, and, and not I want, but I actually expect you, God, to show up and show out. How many of you guys came here today expecting God to do something miraculous in their lives? Praise the Lord. And I really mean that, like, I mean, powerfully. Like, God, did you come here today saying, oh, God, this week has been a mess. I've messed some things up. God, I really need you right now. And so I'm coming to you, to your throne room. I'm coming to your place. And I'm saying, God, I need you right now. How many came here expecting God to do something powerful? Thank you, Jesus. Or how many of us just kind of came because it was kind of more of a routine? And I'm going to be honest with you, as a pastor for many a times, it became a routine for me. It really did. And, 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 and a lot of times when I would when I would study and get ready for sermons and stuff, I, I had the misrepresentation in my mind that, oh, well, I'm reading scripture and I'm preparing a, a message for a church. That is, you know, feeding me, you know, and I'm so wrong. Well, and, and, I, and what I found in my own life and what was happening was I was turning my job into my Christianity. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that, where it became a routine, like if this is what I do on Monday, this is what I have to do on Tuesday. I read this devotion, I go and read this Bible study, I go and do this. And, and, and it, it becomes so, like, systematic that it's just more of a checklist of things that I have to accomplish than actually saying, God, you're a true and living God, and I come before you. Knowing that you're an almighty and all-powerful, and you breathe new life into me when I ask you to say, God, come in my heart and change me and renew me and transform me. I know a lot of times, uh, in, 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 especially as you start to mature in Christianity, it, it, it sometimes we, uh, the best way to put it is, um, when I became a Christian, I was in my early 20s, and I went to a men's Bible study, and I was, I was that uh, heads in the cloud, you know, like, my whole life has drastically changed. I got this, like, new toy. Like, I felt brand new. Like, and I, and I, like, I was that weird person that, like, started telling everybody about Jesus because I had a very outgoing personality. And so, like, I, I became annoying. And I actually I lost a lot of friends that weren't Christians because they are like, we're sick and tired of hearing about this new Jesus thing in your life, you know? We kind of like the old Anthony. This new one, this new version, we really don't like because... We were kind of, and, and I would hear people say some of my some of my older friends that were from my past were like, "Oh, you become one of them better than now, everybody." And I'm like, "No, listen, I'm still messed up. Like I'm screwing stuff up." And you said crap first, so I can say in church here too. Um, I, I'm messed up. So it's like on a daily basis, I'm trying to get closer to God, and, and that's why I'm trying to share it with you. And, 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 and trying to, you know, tell people, like, listen, I'm not better than you. Actually, I, 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 as I studied this book over the years, I've actually become a lot worse of a person. I, I see a lot more flaws. Have you ever kind of done that? I started reading, like, man, man that guy gets home. That hurts. It's like, man, and, oh, God, you really want that? Oh, you really want to be faithful? You really want to trust you or anything? Man. And uh, as I was preparing for this week, uh, I, uh, I have not held back on, on my stance on where I believe the old church is gone. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, the things need to be done, and, and who cares about that anymore? And this is, this is my stance on now. It's time to go forward, right? There's people that need to be saved, right? Amen. There's a gospel message that people need to hear. No matter where they are in their life, no matter what's going on in their life, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it fundamentally it needs to start within these walls here. John Wesley said one of the greatest things. He said, "If you set yourself on fire, people come watch you burn." I love that statement. 
I mean, literally, I mean, if you just even think about the little thing of it, and you douse yourself, you know, with gasoline and you set yourself on fire, I guarantee people are going to show up. <laughs> Probably ambulances, and, and I'm pretty sure, you know, being open, uh, I live in a small town, more to a little kind of farther north of here. Uh, everybody knows everybody's business, you know? And once the 911 call goes out, everybody in town knows, right? But the reason why I say that is because of, I've been praying about the last seven years for revival, and we saw hints of that happen at Asbury City Theological Seminary. But not just there, but in different places that has it, it sparked other little revivals. As, as an evangelist, as a person that loves to do street stuff and, and see people come to Jesus, it makes it, I'm excited right now. And I can see that a lot of you are not. <laughs> because I want you to think about that time when you first came to Jesus. Can you remember back? That first time that you felt that loving power just fall on you and say that you're mine. Just like the scripture we read where Jesus is talking about being the gate. And you became a part of the flock. And you just knew the word of Christ. You felt that, that, that clothing of love and compassion of like only like a, a dad can do. That can, you know, just hug you and love on you. And, 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 and just, you know, you just go, man, I want to do something better in my life. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better woman because of this power that has come over me of nothing but love and compassion. Do you guys remember that? Amen. Some of you might need to have that today. <laughs> I want to talk about the Holy Spirit today. Thank you, Jesus. Do you guys understand that when we become Christians and we accept the Holy Spirit into our lives, literally the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that God has bestowed upon us Amen. and in us to sustain us and to push us forward and to transform us and renew us on a daily basis. So one of the things that I want to tell you, because one of the fundamental lies that I hear from people and Christians all the time is, man, this is the way I've always been. Or uh, we as family members make excuses for other people for being certain ways. That is the lie, that is the greatest lie from the pit of hell. Because what you said, when you're saying that, what you're saying is God is not powerful enough to break that bondage. How many of us here are struggling with some type of sin today? Some of us are like, I, I, I don't know, it's kind of what it's like, I don't really want to raise my hand because I don't want people to know because it's kind of a glass house. It's kind of, uh, I, I want to tell you there's a scripture that says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we're all on the same playing field, amen? Right, <laughs> Doesn't that feel good to know that the people that you're sitting next to and the person that you maybe rode here with is not perfect? I saw somebody raise their hand over there. I always love it. I love it when, when, when I talk about like stuff like this. Is like a husband and wife do start to like... Hey, that's you. <laughs> or my wife is like taking notes and she's like, he's not taking for that one. <laughs> Guys, I want to tell you something that, that, that I think the church has lost is that we've lost our identity and who, who the Holy Spirit is. It's become the taboo topic. It's become the one that we really don't want to talk too much about is because it, it, it's kind of a scary topic because now it's like, oh, wait, is he going to start talking about speaking in tongues? Is he going to start talking about these, you know, weird stuff that we see Paul write to the Corinthians about and the gifts of the Spirit. And oh, ultimately, wait, is God going to do something in my life and change who I am? Maybe. Not maybe. <laughs> he will. This is, well, this is not a, oh, it's a 50-50 chance. I truly believe if you ask God, God, I'm struggling with this and it doesn't line up with what God wants for you. He says, I will give you the power through the Holy Spirit to change who you are. Amen. 
your sin that you're struggling with today, and let's, let's pick an easy one, okay? Does anybody here struggle with anger? Every man should put their hand up. And every married wife probably should put their hand up, too. Yes. You absolutely. <laughs> And, 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 uh, and I, I joked about like this for years. Is like, uh, you know, when you're in a real marriage and an open, honest marriage, when you can tell other couples is that, like, um, my wife tells people all the time, like, she's, she, when she teaches and stuff, she goes, I want to throat punch my husband sometimes. <laughs> now, she's not advocating natural violence, but she's like, he's the only one that can push my buttons, <clears throat> and he's the only one that aggravates me that Yes. Much. And, and to be honest, she's the same way for me. I mean, I mean, let's, let's be honest here. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. She's the only woman that, that can walk up to me and go, and she can, like, basically control what state of mind I'm going to be in. And depending on what time of month it is, it might, you know, she might get on some type of bike and run me over, you know, or, or if they're pregnant. We just went through that, and then we just had a baby in October, so, oh. Aww. Yeah, no, it's, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Boy, girl. Now, we had a boy. Name of Malachi. Ooh, so, uh, the scripture that I brought for you today, and it's one of my favorite scriptures, it is this, and, and, and the reason why I brought this is because I, I wanted to talk about who we are in Christ and who we are in his power. And, and what, what, what we can do about things. Because a lot of times what I've learned about people that are on a path, a spiritual journey with Christ and with God, is that, that things happen on a Sunday morning when you feel like you got renewed, you got kind of transformed, and then Monday <coughs> comes around, and it's the same old junk. Even though some things in you changed, that out there hasn't changed. Amen? Amen? You still got the same old boss, you still got the same old people, you still got the same old... It, even though you feel a little bit better about your bills, they're still there when you get home. Amen? I mean, I, I, and that's why I, I hear this. I talk to people about this. Is they come up and ask me a lot of times, is, is, Pastor, what do you do when you get caught up in the midst of something that's trying? And I'm going to be honest with you. The reason why I want to talk about this is usually my wife comes to me to be her encourager. Because I'm always like, man, God, God, God has us. God's always taking care of us. Amen. And he's always been faithful. He's always never left his mind. And so it, this week, though, my wife came to me for those words of encouragement. And I'm like, baby, I just, I don't know. I got some fear about it, too. And she goes, well, that ain't good. You're supposed to be the one to be my encourager. And I'm like, well, you know, it, it's kind of a bleak outlook. And so uh, I, oh, my wife and I, we got together and we started praying. So what we actually prayed is that we, going forward, we're just going to go ahead and just trust God to open doors. Amen. And just trust him. And so what I did, I'm going to tell you guys this, is I read Bill Tyson, the check that you had to write for me to come and, you know, drive down here and, you know, do public supply. I told him to keep that. And here's the reason why. Is because I put a bucket back there, actually I borrowed it from you guys, and one had a dead mouse in it. It was awesome, wasn't it, Tyson? And it's actually one of the donations on it. And, but, but there's a bucket back there, and what, and what I'm saying is, is, is uh, I, I'm, I'm trusting God to move on your guys' hearts to take care of my family. Is that weird? Is that different? Because, because you know what, if there's one dollar in there, or if there's a million dollars in there, I know my God is going to honor that and he's okay. going to use that in a mighty way. That's right. Because I know my God is faithful. My God has always come through. Uh, some of you guys I, I've spoken with, you kind of know my situation. I, I can't go into too much detail because there's an ongoing kind of litigation issue. But basically, I worked for a company. I got hurt. You guys know the story. Amen? Amen. And I, some of you guys, most of you guys have heard my testimony. I've had eight back surgeries in my life, and I'm on the side, and they're trying to say that's the cause of why I have an issue now. Anyway, I can't get into it. 
too much, but just ask the gist of it. But I want to encourage you because my wife came and challenged me. She goes, Anthony, you're called to be an encourager. You're called to be that person, no matter how tough stuff gets, is you've always been that person that stood in the gap. Even when we didn't know how things were going to happen or how things were going to go, you always were the one. And she goes, if you lose that in who you are, the devil wins. Have you ever been pastored by your loved one before? See, it's kind of weird. It's actually being a pastor, and then your spouse does something like that to you, because I'm supposed to be like the you know, theologian and you know, all that, and she comes and says something profound. And I love that, because that's the power of God. That's the, that, that was the Holy Spirit working through her of saying, hey, I'm surrendering myself, and, and God spoke her through her. And so I wanted to read, read probably one of my favorite passages, and it comes out of 2 Corinthians in chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 17, and there's so much power in this, and I want you to understand uh, what, what's going on here. So if you, if you would, uh, uh, follow along with me. I'm a, I preach from the Bible, I just like it, I think it's fun, I like to hold on to it. But most importantly, the reason why I do that is I want to make sure that what the words I say are his words and not mine. Because I think sometimes a lot of people, I think that's why we've had, had some of the issues the church came up with, is people started putting their own words into this instead of what this actually says. And so I stand firmly on this word. And so in verse 17, this is what uh, uh, God says. This is, therefore, anyone who is in Christ... Um, they are, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here, exclamation point. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. That's like your favorite football team this morning. How many Chiefs fans do we have here? Yeah. Woo-hoo! How many of you guys think you're a dynasty? <laughs> I'm trying to get you riled up. <laughs> I'm a Denver Broncos fan. <laughs> yeah, and if God, okay, I'm going to tell you, God's a Broncos fan, because if he wasn't like Sunset Swans, that's all I got to say. <laughs> I'm just saying, I come from God's country. <laughs> no, I'm trying to fire you guys up. No, literally, this statement, his very first sentence, what he's here, he's saying, is so powerful. What he's saying, he says, that if anybody who comes to Christ... The old person, that, that person that, that you knew you needed something new, is completely gone. Amen. It doesn't say that it kind of just took a few things off and tinkered some stuff up, or like um, a lot of people like to do is, you know, uh, get dressed up a little bit better. No, it, what it really means is that everything's been scrapped, and everything that has been put back in its place is brand new. You're white as snow. Crazy. You're a new creation for Christ. Amen. To me, that is so exciting. That on a daily basis, we have that opportunity to say, God, I need you right now to transform my life. I want to be made brand new today. That's powerful. Praise God. Amen. That is the stuff that, 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 that we just all said that we're struggling with sin. That's the bondage breaking right there. Man, you guys like Christian jokes? You guys know why Jesus is not allowed to do resources in Jerusalem? He wasn't. But seriously, this is a historical fact. Jesus was never allowed in the Jerusalem in uh, uh, Jerusalem or anywhere he went. You know why? He's a chain breaker. Because every time that he walks in, he breaks all the chains. That's <laughs> <laughs> a joke. Come on, it's a joke. Come on, it's a joke. It's church. Man, church is supposed to be fun and exciting because, you know what, this is a life-giving message. Because I feel like, I'm going to be honest with you, some of you might need to hear this message today because, you know what, are you dead inside? Do you need that loving power of Jesus Christ to come? And so the old is gone and the new is here. All this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us this ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the same message of reconciliation. We are therefore God's ambassadors as through God we're making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's 
behalf. We reconcile to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Why aren't you guys getting excited about that? Amen. I'm serious. That is literally God saying, hey, I took all of your sin, I took everything that you're going to do wrong, and I put it on my back, and you're free. Amen. Amen. You're free. Hallelujah. How many of you guys got more excited about the Super Chiefs winning the Super Bowl than you are right now? Lord help us. Serious. <laughs> uh, you guys got to start talking back. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I, I know you guys are raised to be prim and proper, but this is country folks, right? And how do we all work out? You're the only person in this place who works out. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm proud of you. You work out. Way to go, my friend. Uh, no one else here works out? No other farmers here. Okay, we got some more kids. No adults? Here we go. Okay, we got a lot. None of you guys work out? How do you guys pull this off? Because okay. I got to work my own. I can't get my wife to get out there and move cows. You guys, I got to come and get some lessons. Y'all are right now. You got a grandma and the kids and everything else coming out. I'm out there chasing cattle right now. Man, I, I, I need to sit down somewhere else and do a parent talk. But I mean, think about it, how often, how excited do we get when we work cows? I mean, they, they either going to work or not, right? They can be the most docile one day, and they can turn around and be the biggest. I know what time it is. They can wait on it. <laughs> We're doing this on God's time. I know you want that that clock. But they can start it out. Because I believe that God wants to do something powerful here today. Thank you, Lord. And I believe that God has sent his anointment on this place to start something more than just keeping the door to the bigger the anointment in this place. That's going to do something powerful in this community. Okay, if I can't get an amen on that, amen. I'm being mean, serious. There is an anointment on, I, I truly believe this. And I, I want to tell you that God wants to use you guys to be that those people. But what needs to happen is first and foremost is that you need to get right with God. Amen. You need to get before the throne. Just like we sang that song, and I sing every time we go. Start singing that song. Start thinking about that. God, what can I be renewed in today? I was a, a pastor in Franklin, Nebraska, and we had an altar. And the third sermon I preached at, it was a very beautiful church. And they, had, they spent thousands of dollars on the woodwork on, on the front. And I asked the church in the second century, when was the last time we had an altar call for people to come get right with God? And they're like, a what? <laughs> the next Sunday, I preached a sermon about if we're not going to use it, then let's remove it because it's an idol. And what I did is I, I screwed a, a piece of two by or four by four behind it where you couldn't see it, and I had a big framing hammer. And I walked up right next to it and I just slammed a big framing hammer into it. And you want to talk about people gasping? <laughs> I thought they were ready. I literally heard a gun get caught. <laughs> but what I, was, what I was trying to get them to understand is that we have an altar here for a reason. That's the throne room. That's the place that we can come and get right with God. Now, I don't believe there's anything significant about this place. You can do it right where you're sitting. Because it's really your heart that's the place. Amen. That's where it needs to be changed and transformed and renewed. So if you're struggling with something today, I came here to encourage you to tell you that God wants to do that in your heart and in your life today. If you, if you go on in that same passage and go on to verse 6, so many times you stop reading that, that, that part of the passage right there. Uh, chapter 6, verse 1 says, So as God's co-workers, we urge you, not to receive God's grace in vain. I love that. Don't just receive it in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I encourage you. And in that end, in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. He 
gave us a road map. He said, I will make you brand new. I'm going to commission you. You're going to be compelled. Think about all the stories in the Bible when, when Jesus interacts with people. The woman at the well, she, she interacts and starts talking to Jesus. Jesus tells her about her sins. What does she do? Does she cower and start crying and all stuff? No, she gets relieved. There's a relieving you can see in her heart in that, in that movement. And then does she just go home and like you know keep doing her duties and her chores? No. She naturally went to town and started telling people like, hey, I want you to tell me this guy. He literally told me everything I was doing wrong. Everything that I was doing wrong, and I found freedom in that. There is freedom when we surrender to God. There's freedom when we let go and say, God, I want you more than I want myself. Amen. The only way that we overcome and we beat the devil comes out of the book of Revelation that says this, is by the blood of the Lamb and the what? Does anybody know the rest of it? The word of our testimony. For the longest time in my life, the first few years of being a Christian, I was embarrassed of the stuff that I used to be before I became a Christian. I didn't want to tell people that I did dope. And I didn't want to tell people I was a womanizer. I didn't want to tell people that I did all those stupid things. It was embarrassing. You're not supposed to do that. But then somebody shared with me, Anthony, your story and your testimony. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is no condemnation of those who belong to Jesus Christ. So if you are feeling beat up or you're hearing some, something in the back of your head beating you down right now, I want to tell you that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. God does not step on you and beat you down. What he does is he convicts you. Amen. And then in that conviction, he says there's a surrender. And there's a guilty verdict already given. And the great thing is then Jesus can say, I've already paid the price. Yes, he did. And so in the passage I read, he said, not counting their sins against them when they ask for forgiveness. And so all the stuff that you do, you've done in your life has already been taken care of on the cross and the blood of Jesus. All we have to do is just start tapping into it. Church, it's time to start coming alive again. Amen. It's time to stop being as pew sitters and, and, and ankle walkers. What we need to start doing is becoming active walkers and movers and shakers and people that are not ashamed to stand up for the gospel message of Jesus and say there's a freedom in this book. There's a freedom in who Jesus is. Amen. Come on, guys. You guys got to get a little excited. <laughs> <'Cause if laughs> not, uh, then, you know what? I, let me start here. If you don't know who Jesus is, let me give you the explicit gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a guy named Jesus who came down on the cross for all the junk that you guys have done. Amen. And if you're carrying a burden around today, he wants to set you free. If, you, if you're lying to yourself saying, you know, I want to put together, and, or I need to clean myself up a little bit more before I come in, that's another lie straight from the pit of hell. Jesus has already said, hey, the work has already been done, and it was done on the cross over 2,000 years ago. All you got to do is say, God, I need it right now. And he does. He, he washes you brand new. He makes you brand new. Then he fills you with his Holy Spirit Amen. to move you and shape you and to tell you to share the message of Jesus. Yes. I heard there's a body shop or a muffler shop or something. I saw something last time I was down here. That you can't go into this guy's body shop here in Oakley without him telling me about Jesus. Okay. I don't know who it is. I forgot who it was. I don't know the greatest man. I got six kids. Who? Kim Satter. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, Woo! Praise the Lord. I don't know if he's good or bad, but if he's so good cool about Jesus, praise God. I ain't going to knock nobody. But what I want to say is that God wants to use you. And if you don't think you have a purpose and a calling, that's another lie. Because every person in this room is called to ministry. The pastor's job, I'm going I'm to break some, I'm going to shatter some glass. Did you know the pastor's real job in the church is to do? It's really not to preach every Sunday. The pastor's job is to equip you and help you find out what you're calling to do and equip you to go do your work that God's calling you to do. Amen. Amen. Imagine if the pastor started doing that, start calling me out and saying, hey, brother, what's your calling what do I need to do to come alongside you to get you doing what you got to do? 
I can tell you major things happening. I got a farmer friend in Nebraska that he, I asked him that question. I said, what is Mark, what is the thing that makes you the most mad in life? And he goes, Anthony, he goes, the statistics he told me that 30% of the kids in Franklin County are going to go hungry tonight. This man went to two, two of his cows and went and kind of butchered all of his ground beef. And what he did is he went to every single house in Franklin County, over 4,000 residents, and put five pounds of beef on the front door, if they needed it or not. He went to the nicest houses, to the, the trailer houses, to the meth houses that everybody knew were doing drugs, to the, the mayor's houses. And it was powerful to see what God did in that. Because of what he did, there was other farmers that said, man, I feel the same way. So actively, every year now, they're butchering 15 cows, and they're now not just doing Franklin County, but they're doing five counties. And they're getting people from those other counties So man, I don't like that statistic either. And now they're doing the same thing. And they're not just picking and choosing. They are just getting anybody and everybody. And the only thing that they leave, they don't leave a note saying, hey, come to our church. The note that they leave is, hey, God loves you right where you are, and that his power, he is powerful enough to save you right where you are, and God is calling you right now to be redeemed. Praise God. And it's a powerful movie. I know I'm late, but I'm okay with that. I'm a long talker sometimes. That's why I didn't make a good Methodist preacher. Because I didn't do the whole 10, 15 minute thing. And I don't just read something I write. I actually, I'm going to be honest, when Pastor John asked me to come, I told you guys before, I started praying. What did this church need to hear? And I, as I put on my heart for this church, there's an anointing in this building and in this place and over you people. Maybe you don't know what that means. So I encourage you to find a brother or sister who knows what that means and understand it and start walking in that anointment. Because in John 10.10, 10, it said Christ didn't come just to give us a pitiful life. He came to give us life and life abundantly. And I'm not talking about God wants to give you a bunch of money. But God wants you to be fulfilled inside that you can put your head down at night and say, you know what? I praise my God the best way I possibly could today. And I'm going to tell you, that is the best feeling in the world. Is when you can lay your head down saying, you know what? I did everything I possibly could to praise Jesus and to lift his name. Because when we do that, we actually put Christ in his rightful place as the king of our life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we remove every idol that's before him and say, God, you are more important than all my possessions. You are more important than anything. I want to make sure everything I do and everything I say points back to you. Yes. There, uh, I was going to have you guys play a song, but since I'm running late, I'm just going to give you guys my homework. Um, and Jeremy Camp has a song, and I just managed to slip my mind. Same so. power. Same power, dude. I thought I help. <laughs> There's a song, Jeremy Camp, you can YouTube it, if you have iTunes, whatever, look it up. The end is Jeremy Camp, same power, listen to it. And it literally says in the chorus, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, rose Jesus from the grave, lives in you. Praise the Lord. Not just me, not just the pastor, but in all of us who call upon Christ's name. Think about that. Now you can understand why God said there's nothing impossible. The creator of heaven and the creator of all these things, the one that knew every one of us before he put us in our mother's womb, the, 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 the God that knows every hair on your head or lack thereof, he knows you. He knows you inside and out. So you can't lie to them. My challenge in this of the home, the two things for homework, is listen to that song, and second of all, why don't you have an honest and open conversation with God on your knees or sit down in your favorite place and say, God, what, am I, what do I need to do? And I bet you he leads you to this book. Open it up and read it. Amen. Every time I open this book, it brings life into me. 
Yes. Even though it convicts my heart sometimes and it hurts me as a person to go, man, I really just messed this up. But that's when I usually say these words. I am so glad, God, that you took care of my problems on the cross. Yes, amen. And thank you for that freedom. Can I pray for us before I have to run out the door? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you so much for the Spirit, God. I ask that you just move in a mighty way amongst these folks today, Father. Um, God, not, it's not just a, a today thing. God, I pray that the, the, the moment that's over this building and over this place and all these people, that they spread it throughout their community and to the rest of their family. And, and, and they start to get a heart and a desire to chase after you and you alone. Father, right now I pray that um, as they go through all this change and this, this transition, God, right now I speak against fear. God does not call us to be fearful people. He calls us to be faithful people. So God, right now I know you have a, uh, a pastor. You have all the things that they're going to be concerned about already lined up, ready to come and do what they need to do. Father God, the most important today, if there's anybody in this place that doesn't have the right walk with you, maybe the kind of faith in it, God, I ask that you break their hearts today, Father, right now, with your Holy Spirit. Speak those words softly to them, that they understand what you, who you are and how much you love them, no matter what their past is or what they've done or anything like that. Father, I ask that you speak directly to them. God, I ask you to speak to all of us that have maybe been walking for a while and maybe we've gotten a little lazy. God, I ask that you renew that fire within our hearts. I ask that you just, you just light us up, Father, and just, uh, we want to be those, those lights to the world. So, Father, I ask that you, uh, you anoint us from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, and then you set us ablaze, and then you put us in, in the opportunity that we could share your name. So, Father, we thank you for everything that you do. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And, Father God, I thank you. Um, as a step of faith that we're making as a family of no longer taking uh, anywhere we preach uh, checks and churches, Father. We're, we're trusting you to show up and show out in a mighty way. So, Father, if it's a dollar, if it's a million dollars, we're going to glorify and honor your name with it. And God, I thank you for the ministry that you call this church to, and not just what you call it to, but how impactful they're going to be for their kids and for their neighbors. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. One last thing I want to share with you. Every church that I've ever led, United Methodist or any other denomination, you guys are talking about raising your kids. I always put a teenager on the church board. It's scary. I know. I see some of you going, what are you talking about? I know. Stop pushing. <laughs> but, but they'll never learn how to run the church until they get put into a position. And it's better for them to learn from you guys now than just being thrown in position and trying to figure it out. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, you guys have a great day. <laughs> Now that we've heard uh, the message, is there any concerns we bring before the congregation? Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask for comfort and healing. Please be with Mike and help to heal his body so he can get out of the hospital, Lord. And please be with Anthony with his back. Please help him, dear Lord. Kathy Sue, please help her <coughs> heal her body as she goes to the doctor to find out what's wrong with her bleeding. And please be with Jim Shuhart. Please keep your hands upon him and help him in his time of need. And Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name who taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, whom art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to temptation, deliver us from evil. To line with the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we'll have our offertory offer. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this offering. We ask that you put it, let us put it to good use in our ministry. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Jesus Paid It All and it's to Worship His Majesty 236. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. Amen. Are you looking for a church family, some place that you can call home? Well, consider joining our Ebenezer family. There's uh, no dress code at Ebenezer. We welcome the person, and we don't worry about uh, what you're wearing. The dress is mostly going to be country casual. Uh, if you want to wear your Sunday best, though, please do so. Uh, but if you're on your way in from work or headed to work, uh, just stop on in. The only suggestion that we have is if you've been out working the cattle, uh, please uh, scrape your boots and clean them off before you come in the building. 
We have weekly opportunities to worship and to uh, be in fellowship with uh, the others at the church building. Uh, Sunday worship begins at 9 a.m. in the sanctuary. And then following our Sunday worship, we have Sunday school where we have classes for all ages starting at 1025. The adults meet out in the fellowship hall while the youth meet in the sanctuary and in the classrooms that are behind our sanctuary. If you are looking to get closer uh, to God through his word and learn more about the Bible, have we got a deal for you. On Monday nights at 6.30 in our fellowship hall, we have a Bible study that is led by Merle and Joan Rothwell. And in this Bible study, they go through the Word of God. They go through the book, then they go through it verse by verse and chapter by chapter. And Merle and Joan have studied underneath uh, rabbis and the Jewish, and so they understand some of the Jewish traditions in a way that some of us uh, as Christians have never heard before. So come and join that Bible study and learn more about what the Old Testament has to say and what the New Testament has to say for us Christian believers. On Tuesdays, the, in cooperation with the Little White Church down in Olpe, we have an opportunity for the kids during the school year uh, to go to All God's Children. All God's Children starts at 335 uh, and ends about 445. They need you to come pick the kids up then. But uh, it is a great time for the kids to, uh, to learn more about God. Then on Wednesday nights for our youth, uh, from junior high age to uh, high school, the high school youth group meets, or the, or the uh, Ebenezer youth group meets, and they meet at 7 p.m. out in the fellowship hall. We also have some monthly opportunities. Our ladies uh, meet on the third Tuesday of every month, and they have fellowship together. So if you'd like to learn more about the Bible and hang out with the ladies, uh, well, come on out and join the ladies at 6.30 p.m. on the third Tuesday of the month. The guys, well, anytime that we're involved, we have to have breakfast. And so there's a breakfast for the guys. Uh, we start breakfast at 8 a.m. on the third Saturday of the month. And then after the breakfast, which normally finishes up about 8.30, we go ahead and have a short devotion. We're out of there by 9 o'clock so that you can go on and continue on with your day's activities. Uh, so... Uh, go ahead and come out and join us uh, for the men's breakfast, if you like. The church is located four and a half miles west of Olpe on Road 70. And so if you want to come out, just leave Olpe headed west, and you'll go off the gravel, off the paved road a little bit, off on the gravel, and then you'll be uh, see the church on the north side or the right-hand side of the road as you're coming out from Olpe. We would really like to ask that God bless you exceedingly and abundantly, and we sure hope that you'll consider coming out and taking a look at Ebenezer Church, visiting us, and maybe becoming part of our family. So we sure hope to see you soon. God bless.